I take this opportunity to wish you all a blessed Transfiguration Sunday. I almost said a happy Valentine's Day. But to those who celebrate Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day to you too. May you have a blessed Sunday as this is the last Sunday before Lent. And if it were not for COVID-19, we would have had Shrove Tuesday this week with all the delicious food prepared by fellow parishioners, not to speak of the fine wine. Together we pray that we will have this kind of fellowship again soon. Today is the last Sunday of Epiphany. We remember the three wise men from the East coming to see the newborn King of the Jews at the Feast of the Epiphany. Now, one of my favorite definitions of the word epiphany is where the words and music speak to you, where the words and the music become something more than that's just the sum of their parts. Now, like with epiphany, today we celebrate another important occasion in Jesus' life, something called the transfiguration, another one of those interesting words. It is defined as the act of or the process of transforming someone or something, changing their appearance very much, especially in a spiritual way. The approaching season of Lent is a time of repentance marked by prayer, fasting and almsgiving. We reflect on what this will mean for each and every one of us. On Wednesday, we will have Ash Wednesday. We are invited to come full circle, like Peter, James, and John, the disciples that Jesus took to go up with him on the mountain, to behold the glory of God, the glory of God and see Jesus transfigured from the inside. Jesus, who was seen by his disciples as a man, reveals his true nature. He shows them who he really is. He holds up a mirror and he asks you and I, do you know who you are? Not as you or the people out there see you, but do you know who you are and who you are seen by God? When the disciples hear the words of God, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, they have their epiphany. All that they heard and witnessed in the presence of Jesus become clear to them. They recognize their savior and then they hear the word, the command from God, listen to him. When I think of the epiphany, I am reminded of the night when Pope Francis was elected, when he spoke to us in his very familiar tone, greeting us, good evening, brothers and sisters. Then he said something very significant. My brother cardinals went to the end of the world to find you a bishop of Rome. In that moment, he did not only acknowledge where he came from, but he also acknowledged who he became, from epiphany to transfiguration. We could spend this sermon talking about the weight and the weight of the glory of God. We can talk of the disciples and their inability to stay awake at crucial moments, or we can talk of the impulsive nature of Peter. We could talk of the significant words coming out of heaven, confirming Jesus as the beloved son in whom God is well pleased. But I invite you to think about what makes sense to you. How do you make sense of all of this? Now, how do you try to make sense to others, 
Let us talk about navigating the great unknown of self-revelation, self-actualization. How are you? How do others perceive and experience you? How do they see you as a child of God, as a beloved child of God, a child in whom God is well pleased? Let us talk about how your Christian nature makes sense to you and how you make sense to others. Remember, we are here to be Christ-like, to show Christ to the world. We are to be radiant with the glory of our coming to life in Christ. We are to manifest the presence of Christ in the world. Yes, we all are, you and, you and me. Please pray for me as I pray for you that we may come to certainty in these uncertain times. The security we all wish for, for most of us are still working our way through becoming that beloved of God, becoming what God sees in us. And this title weighs heavy on most of us. And the weight is long for most of us to become this image of Christ. We struggle sometimes to come into our identity. We, as Christians, we are saved by God but we are still working out our salvation. Let us ponder on some of these things and let us trust the process and be as honest with ourselves as we can be. Let us trust that God who called us, that God may help us become that which God sees in us. That we be patient with one another and love one another despite our imperfections. That you do not have to have it all together because God has your best interest at heart. For all our uncertainty, we do, we do not have to guess who Jesus is. Let us listen to him, to his instruction. Remember, despite appearances to the contrary, we are all still busy fig figuring it all out. May God be praised and may we grow in our likeness of God. Amen.